Today we're going to talk about putting fish in a pondless waterfall. So this is an interesting question, can I put fish in my pondless waterfall? And I get it asked more than you would think. Now for those of you who understand what a pondless waterfall is, it's really a disappearing waterfall. It's a, a waterfall that disappears and it has no pond. So that's the term pondless waterfall. There's many things, a pond free waterfall, adjust the falls waterfall. The basic reality is it's a disappearing waterfall without a pond at the bottom. So it's kind of a tricky question if you don't really know that a disappearing waterfall doesn't have a pond then you might ask if there's if you could put some fish in there now in some of the construction videos you may have seen on our how to build waterfalls or disappearing waterfalls sometimes we'll put a small pool in and along down the way and in that pool we can put a lot of different cool aquatic plants and uh, usually the water's rushing very fast through there and so if you do put fish in there fish are going to end up making their way down the slope and into the, the disappearing basin at the bottom where there's no water reservoir uh, for them to be able to swim in and out of. Because the reservoir for a disappearing waterfall is below grade and there's, there's no standing water at the bottom. So if you are going to have small pools in along the way, then uh, I would say you probably want to run that waterfall all the time so you don't have um, any mosquito larvae like collecting in those particular areas. Because if you shut it off for say a week at a time and you go away, there might be a, sp a time span in the summer where you could have some mosquito larvae you know, breeding in those little pools. But you know, it's interesting because in these, in these pools, when I, a lot of times when we do the small pools, it's in backyards where we have uh, someone who does a lot of bird watching. So we'll do these little areas where there's a small pool of water, maybe four inches, maybe two inches, maybe six inches, depending on what we're doing. But then the birds can come in there and, and bathe in there. So it's it's pretty interesting to do because the real the real hardcore bird fanatics, they want those different levels of, of water inside the area so they can have different birds show up and do different things. I've seen pigeons go in, you know, a couple inches of water and splash around and do stuff. When you get the little warblers and the little tiny like hummingbirds and stuff, they might land on just a little piece of slate where the water comes over. You know, you might have crows playing around in a little bit deeper pool of water. So that's why you might see the different pools in there. But the fact of the matter is we don't recommend that you put any fish at all inside a disappearing waterfall for those particular reasons. But it is cool when you have aquatic plants mixed in there and you might have some small underwater grasses in those areas and it's a really super cool look, especially with the fast running water. But um, really the point of the matter is we don't want to put fish in there. But I want to stop here for a second and I want to talk about the inspiration behind disappearing waterfalls. To the best of my knowledge, um, disappearing waterfalls were, were brought to us in the community of pond lovers and waterfall builders probably about two decades ago. I think there was a gentleman in, in Oregon that was building a lot of them and uh, he kind of brought it to everyone's attention and then everyone grabbed onto that and all of a sudden you have all the different pondless waterfall, you have the ponds free, the just the falls and all that stuff. But the fact of the matter is I do want to tell you about one natural phenomenon where there's a disappearing waterfall and it's in um, Minnesota and it's called the Devil's Kettle and the waterfall comes rushing down, I think it's by Lake Superior if I remember right, it comes rushing down and it disappears into this well, just natural waterfall, absolutely disappears. It's had hikers and geologists and scientists for years and years and years, decades, completely blown their mind over this thing. Imagine these, these uh, geologists, they took these balls and they threw them down into there. I guess they're buoyant enough to where they could sink, but not pop right up. But they pushed these balls through there and uh, they have no idea where they go. They, they figured they could find some upwelling through some other underground streams and they would discover these 
these um, floating balls that they put in there somewhere else down the line, but they just can't find them. So I think that's really the real inspiration behind the disappearing waterfall coming from Minnesota. I think it's really intriguing, and I would encourage you to check out the Devil's Kettle, uh, either in person if you can. One day it'll be on my bucket list to get out to the Devil's Kettle in person and see it for, for true. I've seen it in a couple of scary, scary movies. I've seen the Devil's Kettle in the movie, and it's really quite funny. So anyways, there's a little um, history behind disappearing waterfall. And I'm going to end the day with the question of the day for you. I want to know, pond lovers out there, do you have a disappearing waterfall on your property or have you ever thought about installing one on your property along the way? So please put your, your uh, answers to my question in the comments below. And if you want me to ask your question on our show, do me a favor, hashtag Ask the Pond Digger and blast it on social media and I'll do my very best to answer on the show. Until next time, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.